Page 86, number 11. Your marriage to Jesus or to your spouse is not bondage. Let us, for instance, take the case of marriage. I was listening to a preacher whom I respect a lot, and he said, Marriage is bondage. Once you get into it, there is no way out, but it is good bondage. The Webster Dictionary defines bondage as being slavery or involuntary servitude, captivity, imprisonment, restraint of a person's liberty by compulsion. Tell me, from this definition, is there any sort of good bondage? Ask the Hebrews who were in bondage in Egypt. They will tell you that it was not a good bondage. Ask the Jews who were carried captive in Babylon if their captivity was a good bondage. The Bible never defines marriage as bondage. We must learn not to think above what is written in the Word of God. 1 Corinthians 4 verse 6 In ancient English law, bondage means villainage, which is a judgment that casts reproach on the guilty person. So were we at fault because we decided to be married and the only thing that keeps us together is a set of laws, do's and don'ts. And this set of laws is not in our favour, but is always condemning us. I understand why people are tempted to give that analogy of marriage being bondage. It is because in our society divorce is exponentially increasing, even among born-again believers. We know that God hates divorce. Malachi 2 verse 16 His will is that people remain together for the rest of their life. From the beginning of creation, God made them male and female. For this cause, a man shall leave his father and mother and shall cleave to his wife, and the two of them shall be one flesh. So then they are no longer two, but one flesh. Therefore, what God has joined together, let not man put apart. Mark 10, verse 6 to 9. So some preachers believe that they need to use stronger words to forbid people to divorce, but it sometimes gives people the wrong message. Paul explains to us that marriage is likened to the relationship between Jesus, who is the bridegroom in the church, which is the bride. Ephesians 5 verse 22 to 33. When we read the Bible from Genesis to Revelation and see how God relates to Israel, it is the ways husbands and wives must relate. For God is the husband of Israel and Israel is his wife. Jeremiah 3 verse 20 and Jeremiah 31 verse 32. So the secret of a great marriage is reading the Bible and see how God relates with Israel and how Israel relates with God, how Jesus relates with the church and how the church relates with Jesus. The books of Proverbs and Songs of Solomon are keys for a peaceful and prosperous house and a romantic relationship. The foundation of every marriage must be Jesus and the written word of God. God brought out Israel from the house of bondage and married Israel. He did not bring them in bondage, but set them free and married them. Jesus delivered us from the bondage of sin, and Satan made us free and then married us. He did not put us into bondage again. We decided to remain married to Christ because we love him, not because of a set of laws that was obliging us to stay with him. The love of Christ constrains us, judging this, that if one died for all, then all died. 2 Corinthians 5 verse 14 Yes, not the rules and regulations of the law, but the love of Christ. It is love that keeps us together with our spouse. We need to know about the love of God, what it cost him, and apply it in our marriage. We need to know the perfect redemption plan of God and the application of the perfect redemption plan of God. The banner that God places over us is a banner of love. Songs 2 verse 4 It is written, I am full of words. The spirit within me constrains me. Job 32 verse 18 
So it is the Spirit of the Lord that He placed within you that constrains you to love your spouse, because the love of God has been poured out in our hearts through the Holy Spirit given to us. Romans 5 verse 5 He or she who does not love does not know God, for God is love. 1 John 4 verse 8 In this is love, not that we loved God, but that He loved us and sent His Son to be the propitiation concerning our sins. 1 John 4 verse 10 No one has seen God at any time. If we love one another, God dwells in us, and His love is perfected in us. 1 John 4 verse 12 Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God, and everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. 1 John 4 verse 7 And we have known and believed the love that God has in us. God is love, and he who abides in love abides in God, and God in him. 1 John 4 verse 16 Jesus, our husband, only gives us one commandment, saying, a new commandment I give unto you, that you love one another, as I have loved you, that you also love one another. By this shall all men know that you are my disciples, if you have love one to another. John 13 verse 34 to 35 both in the Christian walk and in our marriage, if we do not have the revelation of the love of God for us, the love of Jesus for us, and how they demonstrated that for us, we will have sets of rules and regulations of the law to try and keep us in that Christian walk or in our marriage. Please read the Bible a lot and become a doer of the Bible. Those 66 books in the Bible talk about the love of God for us and how he demonstrated it. People who do not understand do not have that revelation of the love of God for us, think that Christianity is bondage, and they also think that their marriage is bondage. And they will try to bring everybody else into bondage. Now, the Lord is that Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. 2 Corinthians 3 verse 17 There will be false brethren and sisters who will be brought into your midst unaware, who will come in privily or secretly to spy out our liberty which we have in Christ Jesus, that they might bring us into bondage to whom we should give place by subjection, no, not for an hour, that the truth of the gospel might continue with you and also in us. Galatians 2 verse 4 to 5 But take heed, lest by any means this liberty of yours becomes a stumbling block to those who are weak. 1 Corinthians 8 verse 9 as we read the perfect redemption plan of God and its application, we will understand succinctly what God has provided for us and how we are to respond to His unconditional love. My friend, there is freedom in Christ Jesus, not bondage. I was listening to another preacher and he said, Do not expect marriage to be sweet as the day you got married. When you get married, you go for your honeymoon, everything is sweet, and you enjoy the honey until the bees that brought the honey come out and start stinging you. So I went to the Lord and I told him, Lord, what about the bees that brought the honey? And the Lord gave me some scriptures. They surrounded me like bees. They were all quenched like fire of thorns, because in the name of the Lord I will destroy them. Psalm 118 verse 12. So I already had the promise that all those bees, even killer bees, I will destroy them in the name of the Lord Jesus. I will burn them alive with the fire of the word of God that comes out of my mouth. So I asked God, But what about the stings of those bees, Lord, and their venoms? For bees, like killer bees, have strong venom, and it kills anybody they sting instantly. What if they sting me before I destroy them? Then the word of the Lord came again to me, saying, O oh, death, where is your sting? O oh, grave, where is your victory? The sting of death is sin, 
and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God who gives us a victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. 1 Corinthians 15, 55-57 Praise the Lord! Now you understand why Jesus came to fulfill the law for us and its handwritings that were against us. He nailed them onto the cross so that the strength of the venom of those killer bees was neutralized. Colossians 2, verse 14 even when we sin against God or against our spouse, which is a sting of those killer bees, Jesus gave us a remedy for that, saying, If we confess our sins to God and to our spouse, God is faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. 1 John 1 verse 9 And our spouse also would be able to forgive us because God will work in him or her both to be willing to forgive us and to do that act of forgiveness for the good pleasure of God. Philippians 2 verse 13 Then I said to God, Thank you for telling me how to destroy the bees and how to neutralize the deadly venom of those killer bees. But you know, I have been stung before by bees and I know that it hurts. Is there not a way to even stop all of those bees from even stinging me once? Then the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Above all, take the shield of faith, with which you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. Ephesians 6 verse 16 In our Psalm 118 verse 12 it said, They surrounded me like bees, they were all quenched like fire. Aish, burning, fiery, fire, flame, hot, of thorns, because in the name of the Lord I will destroy them. A thorn is a tree or a shrub armed with spines or sharp ligneous shoots, according to the Webster Dictionary. A dart is a short pointed lance, a missile weapon. It pierces and wounds, according to the Webster Dictionary. Hence the psalmist is telling us that those bees that are surrounding us are armed with a weapon. He likens a sting of bee to fiery thorns of fiery darts. Not just it pierces and wounds, but it also causes swelling and burns and it leads to death, like the fiery serpents that bit the people in the wilderness. Numbers 21 verse 6 Thank God all those fiery thorns, burning thorns or fire of thorns that represent the stings of bees were quenched. And Paul tells you, above all, take the shield of faith and you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. In other words, all the fiery thorns that represent the stings of the bees. The bees that surround you are the wicked. So do not fear. Keep the shield of your faith up and it shall be well with your relationship with Jesus and with your relationship with your spouse. The truth is that you are seeing the bees but the person who is sending them is Satan. Therefore be sensible and vigilant because your adversary the devil walks about like a roaring lion seeking someone he may devour whom firmly resist in the faith knowing that the same afflictions in the world are being completed in your brotherhood. 1 Peter 5, 8-9 Not only you will slay that roaring lion that is trying to destroy your relationship with God and your relationship with your spouse, but you will also destroy all the bees he sent against you, and out of that slain lion you will draw honey. As it is written, Behold, a young lion roared to meet Samson. Judges 14 verse 5 And the Spirit of Jehovah came mightily upon him, and he tore it as he would have torn a kid, and nothing was in his hand. Judges 14 verse 6 and after a time Samson returned to take his wife, and he turned aside to see the dead body of the lion. And behold, a swarm of bees and honey was in the dead body of the lion. And he took some of it in his hands, and went on eating, and came to his father and mother. And he gave to them, and they ate. But he did not tell them that he had taken the honey out of the dead body of the lion. Judges 14, verse 8 to 9. Out of the eater came forth food, and out of the strong came forth sweetness. 
Judges 14 verse 14. Yes, you see, the enemy thought evil against you in your relationship with God and with your spouse, but God meant it for good to bring to pass as it is today, to save much people, Genesis 50 verse 20. That roaring lion you will slay, its bees you will destroy in the name of Jesus, and you will quench all their fiery darts by your faith in Jesus, which comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Romans 10 verse 17 Not only will you enjoy the honey, but you will also bring that honey to people around you, to your parents, to your friends, and to everybody who asks you for that honey. And you will tell everybody what you did to have that honey, and have it more abundantly, so that you have enough to share. Whatever your situation is right now in your relationship with God and in your relationship with your spouse, I have come to tell you, the Lord your God has come to deliver you out of the hand of your captors and the house of bondage, to bring you out of that bondage situation to a good land, a large land, to a land flowing with milk and honey. Exodus 3 verse 8 the Lord will feed you also with the finest of the wheat, and with honey out of the rock. He will satisfy you. Psalm 81 verse 16 The Lord has promised that in your marriage you will be able to say to each other, Your lips, my spouse, drip like the honeycomb. Honey and milk are under your tongue, and the smell of your garments is like the smell of Lebanon. Songs 4 verse 4, 11 Butter and honey you shall eat until you know to refuse the evil and choose the good. Isaiah 7 verse 15 And it will be, from the plentiful supply of milk, they, the young cow and the sheep, shall give. You shall eat butter, for butter and honey shall everyone eat who is left in the land. Isaiah 7 verse 22 So be it, in your relationship with the Godhead and with your spouse, in Jesus' name. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters, it is our time to shine. God wants to perform this first miracle in our lives, just like it was the beginning of the signs Jesus did. John 2 verse 11 He wants to show himself strong on our behalf, because our heart longs for him. 2 Chronicles 16 verse 9 He has kept the best wine for the end. Your best is yet to come. The path of the just is as a shining light that shines more and more, or brighter and brighter, unto the perfect day. Proverbs 4 verse 18 May the glory of Jesus be made manifest in our lives from this day forward. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Regards, G.